Hey guys, it's Ashton. And it's John. What is up, guys? And we're back with another reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to World War I, 1916. This is from Epic History TV. Go and subscribe to the channel. It makes some hella good stuff. Um, this was a suggestion from Jordan Cox, and thank you so much for being patient, Jordan. Here is your video, man, and I'm so excited because this is 1916. Waiting for this one. They left us hanging with 15. We actually started to do 15 again, and I was like, wait one minute. I seen this, and then I remember your email. I'm like, that's right. Um, with that being said, you guys can also help support our channel. Click on the link down below in the descripto, and if you guys donate dollars, we'll even let you pick one of the next videos we react to. Keep it under 10 minutes. You do realize every time you do that, it fucks our video up, right? How so? Every time you've done that, it ruins our video, so you gotta be careful. Oh, all right. I mean, you know that. I've I mentioned. think it happened a couple times. I think it was every time. Um, keep it under 10 minutes. Include the video link title and your email, guys. And also, as of November 20th, they will no longer be posted on our YouTube channel. They will only be sent to you through Dropbox. So keep that in mind. If you don't like that, then just don't do it. Um, hopefully, it does slow down a little bit for the holiday season. As you know, we are parents, and we well, want to do Vlogmas, too. We still hope we get some. But... Yeah, definitely. Um, also, follow my Instagram above my head, and let's get to this oh, video. Got some good stuff on there. Not Getting really. back into the gym. I don't have good stuff on there yet. I have like six posts. One picture Ooh. of you is good stuff. I go for that. Yeah, let's get to this video, guys. <clears throat> World War One was supposed to have been a short and glorious war. But by 1916, a new kind of industrialized warfare had seen the death toll soar into the millions, with no end in sight. Chemical warfare. Naval blockades were beginning to cause shortages of food and fuel across Europe. While thousands of women had entered the workforce, replacing the men sent to fight in their millions. Yep. This is where those posters of that one like lady that's always going yeah. like this came from. I like those though and they, I remember seeing those in the post office still even for some like promo. Yeah. And that was back in like late 1990s. So I, it was cool how long it lasted, you know. All sides were preparing for a long war. Well, as the world needed to happen. The war has raged for a year and a half as the Allies continue to battle the Central Powers. Like when you look at it, World War I right here, you have these three powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. They look like nothing compared to it. Let's look back at this part right here that shows, look at that. They're completely surrounded by the Allies and yet they're still holding. I know, it's cr it's, it's just so weird looking, you know? Battle the central right, it comes down to power, people, and weapons. By Bulgaria. At sea, the British maintain their naval blockade of Germany, preventing the import of food and other vital raw materials. Germany has retaliated with a U-boat blockade of Britain, but has to limit its attacks to avoid provoking the neutral USA, whose citizens have already been caught in the crossfire. Oh yeah, there. We're getting pissed. On the Western Front, French... Just giving the voice to myself, even though obviously I wasn't alive back then. British and Belgian troops are dug in opposite the Germans. Both sides trapped in the bloody stalemate of trench warfare. That would suck. On the Eastern Front, the Russians have ended their long retreat and stabilized the line. Oh, that's... But their army has suffered huge losses. On the Italian front, Italian troops have launched a series of costly, unsuccessful attacks against strong Austro-Hungarian defences. While on the Balkan front, the Central Powers have overrun Serbia, whose army is forced to make a bitter retreat through the Albanian mountains. That's tough. Now, on the 5th of January, Austro-Hungarian troops attack part. Montenegro. They are delayed at the Battle of Mojkovac, but three weeks later, Montenegro is forced to surrender. On the Caucasus front, the Russians launch a surprise winter offensive against Ottoman Turkish forces. Six weeks later, Russian troops occupy the city of Erzurum. Well, of course they did during 
the coldest month of the year because they're Russians and they handle the cold damn straight. In April, they capture the Black Sea port of Trebizond. Meanwhile, the British transport two motorboats to Lake Tanganyika in Africa. Motorboats? <laughs> you think about that, like what was on that motorboat? After a 10,000 mile trip by sea <laughs> and land. a jet ski on it. And help the British seize control of the strategic lake from local German forces. Ooh, there you go. The same month in German Cameroon, German troops besieged on Mora Mountain for 18 months finally surrender to the Allies. Oh wow, so they get completely kicked it out of Africa almost. It marks the end almost. of the Cameroon campaign. On the Western Front, the Germans unleash a devastating assault on the French fortress town of Verdun. German General Erich von Falkenhayn knows France will defend this symbolic town to the last man. His plan, in his own words, is to bleed France white in its defence. It is the strategy of attrition. Damn. Verdun becomes one of the most terrifying battles of the war. A mincing machine, where infantry divisions are destroyed almost as fast as they can be fed into the line. That's crazy. In Britain, one million men have already volunteered for military service. But the government realises it won't be enough. Britain becomes the last major power to introduce conscription. That spring, on the Western Front, British troops are the last to be issued with steel helmets. Wow. The nature of trench warfare produces a high proportion of head wounds. The German Stahlhelm, the French Adrian helmet, and the British Mark I steel helmet offer limited protection from shell splinters and shrapnel. Neutral Portugal has been cooperating with the British, which seems to offer the best chance of holding on to her African colony, Portuguese Angola. On the 9th of March, Germany retaliates by declaring war on Portugal. Oh shit, why'd you bring Portugal into this? On the Eastern Front, Russia launches an attack near Lake Narok to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun. But it's a disaster. Ugh. There are 100,000 Russian casualties. Russia has the had the worst of luck in this war. Well, not That's luck, true. but just destiny in this war. Because they have lost so much for being the biggest power. When I say the biggest power, I mean like land-wise and people count, or body count-wise, you know, they're the largest. So you think that they would just be decimating, but they're not, and that's crazy to think about. Hills to divert any German troops from the fighting at Verdun. In Dublin, Irish Republicans launch an armed revolt Irish. against British rule. It becomes known as the Easter Rising, and is put down after six days of street fighting. Damn. April 24th. That's my brother's birthday. What? April 24th? No, it's 25th. In the Middle East, after a five-month siege, British forces at Kut surrender. General Townsend leads 9,000 British and Indian soldiers into captivity. About half later die from starvation Jesus. or disease. That's so sad to think Britain about. Britain wants Arab support in its fight against the Ottoman Empire. So it's promised Arab leaders an independent Arab state after the war. It's a promise. How do they give but that? now, Britain and France secretly sign the Sykes-Picot Agreement, planning after the war to divide the Middle East into British and French zones of control. Wow, that's pretty fudged up. Hey, we'll give you this. Hey, but seriously, France, like, yeah. we're going to take that one. How much do you want? I want that much. I want that much, too. Okay, let's take it. That's messed up. Unaware of this deal, Hussein bin Ali, Sharif of Mecca, leads the Arabs in revolt against Turkish Ottoman rule. In the Battle of Mecca, his forces seize control of the Holy City. On That's the crazy. Italian front, Austro-Hungarian forces launch a surprise attack. I want to go to Italy so bad, huh? Me too. I want, I want the pizza. That's what I was about to say. I want to taste some real Italian pizza. Fucking pizza. We have a screaming system pizza. pizza in the, in the um, freezer. Really? That good one that you, you like? Yeah. 
Is Zoe awake still? The premium. She's probably asleep in the room by now. We but can't she, steal her pizza again. We she loves it. little mustache that comes with it, guys. It's a premium pizza, which means like one of the more expensive frozen pizzas. It's like seven bucks. Six bucks for just a frozen pizza. That's a lot for frozen pizza, but they're very good. Well, it's average, I'd say. But usually we get the good ones that are... Well, we don't buy pizza too often, but when we do, it's like the... Um, Lotso Mozza, which is like that's, a $10, $12 pizza. How much that's is the it? same as Screaming Sicilian Love. They're rated at the exact same price. This one's $7, that one's $7 for a regular pizza without any sale. I thought Lotso Mozza's were $10. It depends on what store you go to. Some of them do overcharge it up to nine ninety nine, but oh. usually it's seven or six ninety nine. But the, I don't know, I feel like I like the Screamin's, whatever they're called, more. The crust has got a nice little crunch to it. It's not the crust, it's, it's everything. I don't know. And let's go pizza. get it. They're pretty good. Pizza! Asiago. What we all agree on is that pizza is awesome. I never liked it. Italian I never defenses used to like give it. way. Pizza? Stop this. Austro. I never was big into pizza. You remember this? See, as soon as they mention Italy, now we're on a rant about pizza. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I was never into pizza. Like, when you and I first got together, it took me probably a year or two to really get into pizza. And I got more into pizza, like, the last... Two years we've been together. Oh, years. pizza's delicious. Get a nice I never slice. cared for it. Pizza, and there's something else that's really popular that I never cared for. But yeah, like, who doesn't like pizza? Chinese well, food? I never did like pizza. No, not that. I never liked that either until the past couple of years, too. But let's get to this video. All right. Hungarian troops are poised to break through into northern Italy. That month in the North Sea, the German high seas fleet clashes with the British Grand Fleet at the Battle of Jutland in the only major naval I thought he said Jacklin, but it's Jutland. He did say Jacklin. Battle of the War. The British suffer heavier losses, but claim victory as the German fleet withdraws and does not re-emerge from its base for the rest of the war. Damn. For the summer of 1916, the Allies have planned major, simultaneous offensives against the Central Powers, from East and West. Now they are needed more All than angles. ever to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun and the Italians at Asiago. The Russians launch their attack first. On the Eastern Front, General Alexei Brusilov has carefully maintained the element of surprise. His troops break through the enemy lines, in some places advancing 60 miles and taking 200,000 prisoners. Damn, 200,000! This brilliant, though costly, Russian attack achieves its aim, as the Central Powers are forced to redeploy troops from other fronts to shore up the line. And that's exactly what Britain and France wanted sea, right there. British cruiser HMS Hampshire, en route to Russia, hits a mine and sinks off Orkney. Damn. Among the 650 dead is Britain's iconic Secretary of State for War, Lord Kitchener. Three days later in the Adriatic, Italian troop ship Principe Umberto is sunk by a German submarine. It's the deadliest sinking of the war. Damn. With 1,900 that's lives that's lost. That's crazy there's that many people on one vessel. On the Western Front, Britain and France launch their major summer offensive. This is it. The Battle of the Somme. Hopes are high for a breakthrough, but the first day is a disaster. A long Allied artillery bombardment fails to knock out German defences, and waves of British infantry are cut down by machine gun fire as they advance into no man's land. In the space of a few hours, the British suffer 57,000 wow. casualties, a third of them killed. Oh my god, in a it's few the worst hours. Day in the history of the British army. But more attacks are ordered, and the battle will rage for another five months. Oh my god. Romania. Encouraged by the Russian advance, Romania joins the Allies. But despite an initially successful advance into Transylvania, Romania quickly faces a counter-offensive from German, Bulgarian and Austro-Hungarian forces. Wow. The Allied force at Salonika 
tries to support Romania by launching their own offensive towards Monastir. With Serbian troops in the lead, there are small gains, but dogged Bulgarian resistance prevents a breakthrough. On the Western Front, General von Falkenhayn finally calls off the attack at Verdun. The French army has honoured their commander, General Nivelle's promise. Ils ne passeront pas. They shall not pass. Some Gandalf shit going comes on there. at a terrible price. 365,000 casualties. The Germans lose almost as many. It's like, wow. That's Verdun crazy. remains one of the bloodiest battles in human history. That's sad. Oh my god, those are people right there. For his defeat at Verdun, Falkenhayn yeah, is sacked. Of and Germany's heroes of the Eastern Front, von Hindenburg and Ludendorff, take command in the West. That's Meanwhile, so the Battle of the Somme continues. Near the village of Fleur, this is the, the British battle. introduce a new weapon they hope can break the deadlock of the trenches. It is called the tank. But despite some small successes, the first tanks are too few in number and too prone to mechanical failure to make any real impact. Wow. That's when they first On the introduced Eastern the front, tank. Russia's Br Brusilov British. offensive comes to an end. Casualty estimates vary wildly, but it's clear both sides have suffered catastrophic losses. Neither the Russian nor the Austro-Hungarian army ever fully recovers. On the Italian front, heavy fighting rages throughout the autumn. As Italian forces make repeated, costly assaults against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River. Damn. The Battle of it's the about Somme even for comes body to count, an though. end amid autumn rain and mud. The Allies have advanced 10 miles at That's the cost it? of 600,000 casualties. Oh my god. German losses are about 450,000. 33.33% more. The Allies reassure themselves that this is a winning strategy. Because at this rate, Germany will run out of men first. You guys losing more, though. Meanwhile, disaster engulfs Romania, as the country is overrun by the Central Powers. Romanian forces suffer a quarter of a million casualties. Oh my god. The remnants of its army take position alongside the Russians on the Eastern Front. That winter, Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria since 1848, dies. He is succeeded by his son, Karl. In Britain, Prime Minister Herbert Asquith is forced from office. Wow. And succeeded by David Lloyd George. While General Joffre is replaced as French commander in chief by General Nivelle, who promises wow, a lot of changes through bold, aggressive action. Amid the comings and goings, US President Woodrow Wilson's attempts to mediate a peace settlement come to nothing. Neither side is willing to make concessions. Damn. Epic History TV relies on the support of fellow history lovers. So if you like what we do, please consider pledging anything from one dollar. I am. Go do that, you guys. Go visit their Patreon page if you do want to see stuff like that. Yes. To support them. It is awesome. But the thing is, is that. The channel is Epic History TV, right? Look, yes, it is. That's Epic History TV, guys. Go Make and subscribe. Sure, yeah. It is 1916. America's still not involved, you know, because we're just sitting back, you know, doing whatever. Can't believe that was 102 years ago. Please have peace. No. Well, shit, what do we do now? You guys aren't going to come to terms with each other. Um, that's the thing, is that if America would have gotten involved right away, look, 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 look. this wouldn't have been a problem at all. It's good. It's same, so little. It's like Sorry. the same with World War II, you know? Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. What? They look good. You don't want I big didn't biceps. Say anything. I said, look how little my biceps are. That's like, do you, you want them bigger than that? Yeah, a little bit. They used to be bigger until I stopped working out. Yeah, a little bit bigger. I don't have much muscle anymore because I quit working out. It's all still there, honey. You just got to pump it back up. They're out of shape. That's it. Oh, bam. Guys. My boob flex is <laughs> when I do it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, everyone. Have a good night. Bye.